But this song overall, like, no, it's, it's not enjoyable. It's definitely not enjoyable enough to be this long, too. Like, this is a six and a half minute song. Damn, it was. I thought it was five. I thought it was hard. I'm like, this song, this bitch was hard. Hold on. This bitch is so hard. Is this bitch not hard? That bitch hard as fuck. This bitch wanna know how this song is on the album. Hard as the pink. Like, yeah, I gotta hear it. Yeah, you can talk to me, then. So, like, they was tripping on this one. Been a minute. We be the bench warmers. But we back. Two out of five. Edit again. With another tell reaction. Them. Tell them tell them who we reacting to though. The one and only. The fucking nigga. Amir. What's going on, pimp? Um doing this one is the uh every Nicki Minaj song, right? That's that a lot of songs. That is a lot of songs. So I'm but curious to know how many parts he has to this. Um, I assume more than a few. I think I saw two, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was more. We wanted to come back and do the uh, part two for the ranking every little Wayne song, but we've been going for a while. A lot of things transitioned, a lot of things happened. weren't able to get to it in time. I'm not sure if it's still on his page or not, but if it is, somebody please send the link down below in the comment section. We'll also get to that too. But also going to transition over to this legend, Queen of rap and see what uh his video talking about for her because i'm very curious to see his ranking on this and i'm sure uh a lot of viewers will be as well let's get into it how this is work seeing you know, all the songs that an artist has i have mm -hmm. a part one point so one big day the group and one I'm That's sorry, so long. to start this up i wanted to say that ever since i announced that i was doing a every song rank <laughs> series on nicka minaj i've been getting warned by a lot of people. <laughs> I don't know how y'all Barb's fans act. Could imagine. But ever since I said I was on the video, yeah. people keep hitting me up saying, like threats. Like, man, you might want to be careful with that Nicki Minaj video. Any <laughs> single song isn't perfect or isn't the best song in the universe, the Barb's are going to dislike you and hate you forever. So I'm like, damn, is that really how y'all act? <laughs> if what these people are saying is true, then I'm expecting this video to be all dislike, then I'll be able to handle the hate. But because I'm 100% sure that some Nicki fans Strong who come across this video have never seen or heard of my channel before, I want to quickly explain how this series works. So for all the songs that an artist has, I have a part one and a part two. Part one is talking about all the songs by the artist that I dislike, and part two is talking about all the songs that I do like. So for each song, I split them up like this. First, I look at whether I like the song or I don't like the song. Then I look at whether I think the song is good, whether I think the song is I or decent, or whether I think it flat out sucks. So there's six different possible categories for a song to end up in. And I talk about three categories in each video. If I dislike the song and I think it's bad, then the song is whack. These songs are the bottom of the bottom and some of the worst songs in the artist catalog in my opinion. If I dislike a song but I think it's decent, I will say it's forgettable or it's good. I wouldn't get carried away and call it trash. If other people like it, that's fine. I just don't rock with it. Then lastly, the Not For Me tier is a song that I will give credit to and say it's a really good track, one of the best from the artist, but I myself am just not entertained by it. I wouldn't really want to listen to the song. The other three categories that will be in part two are pretty easy to explain as well. If a song is bad, but I like it anyway, then it's a guilty pleasure. If I like the song, but I still think it's I, it's a cool song, then I will say it's good enough. I wouldn't get carried away and say it's one of the top songs in the artist's discography, but it's cool. And then lastly, the fire tier contains some of the best songs in the artist catalog. So I hope that quick little rundown made sense to everyone. Another thing just to quickly mention is that I don't discuss bonus or deluxe edition track in this series. And also no mixtape songs because it makes it easier for me to not have to listen to too many songs. So if that does cut down shit a lot. But I'm not gonna lie, I think one of the best things about um the aesthetic of his videos are his his tier categories. Very descriptive. Facts. So if I was to do a video like this, tears are definitely gonna help you out the most. Um, so yeah, that's pretty smart. Nikki, any mixtape track and then any deluxe album songs such as Super Bass, like Truffle Butter, 
Bop Bop Boom, Barbie Teens, and several others won't be in this series as well. But enough time explaining things to the Barbs. Like, let's get straight to the shits. <laughs> Taking off of the wax tears, these are the songs that I think are Nicki's absolute worst. So if you think these songs are fire, then our taste in music is drastically different. I almost paid this guy's bills for a second. But I have When of course she started, I just decided like to do something. You know, he also has. Way more money than me. Oh, oh this is why I Oh, this is popular. Like, just off this entry alone, Starships is such a stupid song. Right? <laughs> the reason people love it so much is because people ignore lyrics and listen to songs for vibes and energy. So, because this is one of Nikki's big like, a lot crossover of songs. When she started True. making those pop hits, yeah, people just ate this song. This was two of the producers song. on the track are people who also produced some of the biggest songs of Lady Gaga's career, so anyone in her camp for sure can make a pop hit. Where Starship lands in the whack tier for me is most definitely the lyrics. I understand the song is just supposed to be a fun dance track, but that don't mean she gotta say nonsense like, and I ain't paying my rent this month, I owe that. And then the entire second <laughs> verse is just super random. Nikki herself I didn't said that she didn't even write the song and that the lyrics just came about as she was recording it. Like, dude, like Starship <laughs> is really a terrible song, but the pop dance vibe that it has allowed many people to overlook how nonsensical the song really is. I fuck with this. I think I did fuck with this one. I've already talked about this song in a video I made called Five Songs I Never Liked, but I'll quickly sum up what I said there in this video. First of all, this beat has never been good to me. <laughs> That'd be hard to me. I hate it, man. The meaning of the song is childish and too, and not funny. I just shit it on them. Put your number twos in the air, <laughs> like really. And oh my gosh, this is one of my bigger problems with the song as well. Did it on them is the number one song in this woman's catalog that made me realize that Nicki can say the wackest or the most simple bar in the universe, and her fans would just eat it up and call it fire. These bitches is my son. I ain't talking about Phoenix. Like that line is corny as hell. <laughs> You, you, you just don't get it. It was a metaphor for Phoenix Suns, like the basketball team. Man, look, man fuck all that. Like, that, that was whack. <laughs> I'm the Terminator. If a bitch talks slick, I'm gonna have the Terminator. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand the damn song. The only credit I give no is, is one of those songs where Nikki established her whole, like, these bitches is my son's attitude and told people how she's the queen of rap, like, right out of the gate. And that's probably why so many people like it. But for me, this execution was trash, and I just never enjoyed this song. Queen of Rock. I don't even remember this song. I don't remember this. <laughs> Whip It is the absolute worst song that Nicki Minaj has that's about sex. She just comes right out the gate about sex. Song, bragging about her poo nanny. The first words are, hey, you, jump in this ride. It's real nice and slippery inside. Another thing, too, is that her singing just isn't that great on this track, too. And typically, I'm someone that believes Nicki Minaj is a much better singer than she is a rapper, but I, I hated this song. <laughs> now, that's what we're going to have to go ahead and stop the video there. Um, that's, honestly, that's, that's the first time I've ever heard anybody say that before. Because um, we all know how extensive her high level of rapping ability is and how versatile she's able to become with it. I, uh, I mean, personally, I enjoy Nicki Minaj when she sings on most songs. Yeah, I won't say Nicki's definitely not a bad singer. She's not a bad singer, but the level of her rap and lyricism oversees so many, I, I can't put it yeah. under her singing. Yeah. I'm, I'm Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I'm definitely one that prefers when she raps, but I mean, shit, I've never been mad when she starts singing. Yeah, that type of shit. Like, if I hear her sing, like, okay, when she starts rapping and then, like, on the back verse, she starts singing for, like, eight bars. Mm hmm That's cool. I, I didn't expect it. Yeah, I ain't. Because she, she has a large variety of fans who like her singing. That's why she's on so much pop shit. She, she's good at it. She can do it. But I always want to hear that rap. The production is air graded to me as well. Nicki's second album was halfway filled with these massive pop sounding songs and that's when she started getting scrutinized for trying to switch her sound up. Some say it worked, others say that she failed miserably. For this song, Whip It, I would say that she failed miserably. Like this song is not good at all and if you never heard it, like, good for you. Before we get into the forgettable okay. slash gift here, I do want to quickly address something. Any person that says Nicki Minaj does nothing but talk about sex and her music has not listened to this woman's albums at all. Does she talk about it a noticeable amount? Like, yeah, certainly. 
but she has a lot of songs where she doesn't even mention sex. Like there isn't a single line Fast. about sex in the entire song. The reason why so many Nicki haters don't know that is because y'all don't even listen to her damn music. Out of all 65 songs from her four albums, the total amount of songs where either the entire thing is about sex or she mentions it a good amount where it could be considered a sex song is only 11. 11 out of 65 songs. The song Whip It that I just talked about was one of them. I'll list the rest of the songs right here. But my point is, for any one song you hear from Nicki that's about that topic, you'll hear three or four that aren't about that topic. Her entire first album doesn't even have songs about it. So yeah, take it from me as someone who has sat down and listened to every single song or all four of her albums from beginning to end. If someone ever tells you uh, Nicki Minaj mostly talks about her ass, her boobs, like, don't don't listen to those people because that shit isn't true at all. Now, sorry for the mini rant there. Like I feel like I'm turning into a bar now. <laughs> But <laughs> let's move on to the skips, y'all. These are the songs in Nicki's career that if I with them, like, I won't judge you for it. Forget Just them. for me, like if I wanted to put on some Nicki, like, I would go straight past all of these songs. This is a song that I immediately <laughs> thought would be in a whack tier. As soon as I decided Ooh, that she would be the I forgot about this shit. Too. Damn, I, I haven't heard, heard this shit in a minute. Gold, about to go in the whack tier As you guys can see, that shit's funny. Fuck, I haven't heard that song in a very long time. I wasn't expecting that. Um, it's crazy because when <laughs> that shit first came on, I was like, did she just say what I think she just said? Yeah. yeah. And then she said it again. The clear. second time. Yeah, to make sure you, you have the understanding. That's funny. See, that's not the case. What happened though was, I just sat down and finally listened to the song. I used to think it was so terrible because of the hook, which still is terrible. And the whole like dick in your face part was really weird. Other than those two things, there's nothing really bad about this track. And just to inform anyone who may be confused on the title and think that it actually means to come on a cone, no, like, uh, of course not. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> the song is mainly her bragging about how successful she is and how no other women are touching her level. And the hook, she's actually bragging about her jewelry. You guys know how jewelry is referred to as ice. So she's saying, all this ice that I'm wearing is so cold that it should come on a cone like ice cream would. Ice cream is cold mm -hmm. and that's on a cone. My jewelry is so icy and cold too that it should also come on a cone. Now don't get me wrong, like, the hook will forever be one of the worst hooks that this woman has ever done. <laughs> the entire song as a whole, like, I, I can't call it trash because it really isn't. And I know a lot of you are surprised to even hear me say that. So everything I just said about Starship earlier, you would think applies to this song as well, and that I would call it whack too. And that's not the case. Like, first of all, Pound the Alarm isn't nearly as lyrically bad as Starship. And when it comes to the overall sound, like, Pound the Alarm is 50-50 for me. Like, I hate the sound of this. But then this next part sounds really good. So this song can honestly go back and forth from annoying to enjoyable for me. I don't like the song as a whole, but it's definitely better than Starships. If anyone thinks Starship is better than Pound the Alarm, y'all are crazy. Hmm. Oh my goodness, Wei Lee sounds terrible in this video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did this song, this song well. like, Sway Lee has a performance where he's shining on the Hey, track. shout out to Sway Lee for even getting the feature on Nicki's uh, fucking album, because that's, that's, that's a big move. That shit's funny as fuck. But he did sound like this the entire song. This nigga said, What the fuck? This might as well be the worst song on the Queen album. That's the performance where he's shining on the track, and he's the only reason why the song may be enjoyable to listen to. But that's the complete opposite for Chunk Sway. <laughs> now, the reason this song is I actually believe on this song. Bro. Wait, why of course Bobby tipping? I endorse Barbie stripping me carpet, but I ain't got no floors. Doors look like wings. Barbie sitting by the bean. Barbie tripping. Like, <laughs> that de that delivery is really enjoyable for me. But this Catch song you. overall, like, no, it's, it's not enjoyable. It's definitely not enjoyable enough to be this long, too. Like, this is a six and a half minute song. Damn, it was. Was I thought it was five. <laughs> I thought it was hard. Oh, you don't like this? Oh, this bitch was hard. Hold on. This bitch is so hard. <laughs> Is this bitch not hard? That bitch hard as fuck. This bitch wanna know how this on the, on the album. Oh, this is the pink. Like, yeah, I gotta hear. Yeah, you can talk to me then. Like, they was tripping on this one. I'm listening to this shit tonight. Ah, yes, the first Nicki and Eminem collab. 
I know this is a beloved track amongst a lot of people, but it just never hit for me. The idea was cool, with both rappers having like their alter egos show up, Roman and Slim Shady. It really showed the personality that both rappers have to make a song like this. And I would admit the beat is banging too. It's just what they actually say on the song that's just like not funny to me or anything. It's not menacing. Funny. And Eminem's performance is actually We're not trying funny. to be funny. Nicki wasn't trash or anything, but M just completely missed and did nothing for me here. Mm. Overall, I think the song is okay. Like I would skip it entirely, but I really do like the rock, rock, like a dungeon dragon, like a dungeon dragon, like a dungeon dragon. I, I can't even hate that part is fun to say. I'm not gonna lie. I think that bitch was so hard. If I'm not mistaken. I feel like it was probably a hundred different fucking remixes to that song that other people were just hopping on that beat and just spitting because it was just so fucking hard. Um, I'm mad I can't even really just... I remember Eminem came on kind of like quick pace to start his verse. I don't remember all of it, but I definitely remember I liked it. And that nigga was talking about tying that bitch up to a bedpost and pissing on her. And that's, that's saying, look, two peas in a tripod. In a tripod. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds like a, like an OG Eminem verse. That's that's Eminem for you. Um, that's funny. Man, damn, yeah, alter ego, so crazy people. I'm gonna check that song out tonight. Honestly, this has been a since I heard that. Roman Reloaded is oh. one of the harder songs that Nicki has. Like, I will give it that. I see why people would hear a song like this and say like, "Ooh, like Nicki is going in on this song." I get it. There's two problems I have with this track though. Lil Wayne's performance for one, like Lil Wayne actually, he hardly ever adds anything to a Nicki song. Almost any song that she has from her albums with him on it, it would be better if he wasn't on it. Damn! You know, him talking about smoking, toting guns, and how good he can get a girl's poo nanny all the time, like it, it gets tiresome very fast. The second thing being the hook, like I know a lot of people love it, but this is one of those songs where the verses are really short, so you hear the hook like a million times in one track. There are six verses in this song, and they all last for only like 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds, you hear <laughs> bang, my shit, bang, it bang, bang. Like, yeah. That's another thing that gets tired so pretty quickly. The beat is cool, Nicki's rapping is hard, but the Wayne feature and the hook, like constantly playing so much, really drags down the quality of this song for me. This is cool. Nicki has a few amount of songs where they don't sound like songs that she would make. Like the actual songs themselves are fine, but the weird thing about them is that they don't fit Nicki Minaj. The Night Is Still Young is a perfect example of this. But first of all, like the song itself is nothing spectacular. It's one of those basic pop songs about enjoying life and having fun. Like it, it ain't need those. So listen to what I just said. Life too short. It's a song about being youthful and being happy and not living life too fast and just enjoy it while you're here. And that's the issue I have with it. If this was a typical like pop diva that made this kind of song, it would fit their style. But when Nicki Minaj talks about this topic and you listen to how the song sounds, it comes off as her trying to be somebody she's not. It's almost like she's trying to be like Ariana Grande or JoJo or something like that. So once again, like the song is so okay. It's just nothing about JoJo Siwa sounds like a Nicki Minaj song. Now here's the thing as well. I'm going to be hypocritical here because when you watch part two of this video, there are going to be three songs and the good enough tier, where every single thing I just said applies to those songs too, but I still like those other songs because they sound better. I will point them out in part two when we get there, but just know this whole idea of her making songs that sound like she's biting another singer style, this isn't the first time she's done this. This is one of the most boring relationship songs that she has. Actually, it's one of her most boring songs in general. <laughs> The song's premise is just being attracted to someone that, that you know ain't shit. Like, they're a cheater, they're a player, and a liar, but you look past all of those things because you like them anyway. This song, in my opinion, mm -hmm. solely comes down to whether you enjoy Nicki singing on the track or not. But it's an easy dub for me. Mm, I don't remember this one. I feel like I like this. I do think that the hook is pretty funny. Yes, I am your leader, you not a believer, suck a big dick. Like, that, that is funny, and Nicki's delivery is nice. Better than the lyrics itself, but <laughs> the sound of her rapping is cool. Where this song becomes pretty boring for me is the features. Like Killer Cam has the final verse and he just does an okay job. Right before him is Rose. And Rose in general is somebody I'm never really impressed with or entertained by his music. I guess as a lyricist, he's always been like super basic and people just love him <laughs> for his presence. Just seeing his name attached to something and hearing him say the boss, I think <laughs> I think he gets people to so I'm not gonna lie. Oh, 
obviously we have, you know, the different perspectives on music, and that's cool, that's fine, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and I, I respect it as well. But at the same time, with that, I am gonna also... The bucks. <laughs> encourage you to check out some other, you know, Rick Ross uh, snippets, albums even. What's, what's that one that came out like 2017 that we was real hype on? Um, honestly, Damn, I don't remember the called. title. But you know what I'm talking about, huh? I do. I'm about to look it up right now, honestly. Cause yeah, I mean, Rick Ross, <clears throat> I mean, he's not the biggest lyricist out there, but I definitely think he uh, has more to, to add to attracting just his presence in uh, that humorous ad lib. He makes me feel uh, rich when I'm poor. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a vibe. Like it's a vibe of luxury when you listen to Rick Ross. It's a certain vibe. Rather you than me. Ooh. That bitch was hard. Um, Porter Miami 2. That was also cool. What the? F Have you heard this? Porter Miami is a classic too. What? Um, Can you hear me now? Have you heard that? No, he dropped an album this year. Yeah, nobody talked about it. Oh, this is a song. Uh, oh, he dropped this a few days ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure check out Rather You Than Me if you're just not a Rick Ross fan, because you might fuck with it. I know I did. The life is just based off that alone. I don't know a single thing about Foxy Brown, so I don't know if she's always rapping in this manner, but her delivery on this song was very irritating <laughs> to listen to. This song. Like her dialect and mannerisms, I listened oh, to this song like 10 times. I don't and remember her verse. This girl was saying. Coco put my foot down. See punk my little pretty red bull. I see the bus for one baby, see them chuck. Like I didn't understand mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so for me, it's hard to feel solely because I don't speak the dialect Proxy Brown does. So I really don't know what she's talking about and I can barely hear her. But I'm sure somebody out there in the universe think this is fire. So but ask them what this song is about because I don't know. <laughs> Now, Miami is pretty much a song where Nikki frames herself as a thug and a drug dealer. No, she too. has another song like this, and that song is actually really good. But Miami is a major skip. Part of it being <laughs> how major she skip. just sounds on this song. Like, the strong E sound that she emphasizes on every word becomes annoying really fast. Too much money, I ain't never need the sugar daddy. I'm the bell of the ball, you can call me Patty. Like, that's it. <laughs> Imagine hearing that type of delivery for an entire song. That's what Miami is like. This is one of the songs on the main <laughs> album where I went, oh yeah, th this is easily going in the skip tier after I got done listening to it. I really don't like the production on this song. Like, it's super abrasive. Like, Kanye West uses levels of abrasive. The meaning behind the song is clever though. I'll give it that. I'm not about to explain it here. Like, look it up if you really want to know. But the song is really her bragging about how she's in the fast lane in life. She's one of the hottest people in the game and everyone pays attention to her. While other people are has-beens and have nothing going for themselves. But truthfully, <laughs> cool topics. Yeah, this song was fine, I guess. Yeah, I the other Nicki Minaj and Ariana Grande collab, which was based on the this? album, I actually like that one. So that's going to be in part like This song pink though pink. was establishing the I was empowerment and dominant feel for Damn women Brandy. and towering over men instead of the other way around. Huh. I really don't have an issue with the topic. This song is just boring as hell to me. Hearing Nikki just mm -hmm. talk about how a dude should assume the position and give her brain talking about how good he is at eating her. Like I, I, I don't really get anything from the track. I'm not saying that the song having sexual lines itself is an issue. It's just this one specifically, it's like, there's nothing about it that I enjoy. You would never catch me listening to this song. Like, even though it's not my cup of tea, it's still just an okay song anyway. Nothing but real niggas only. Bad bitches only. It's crazy. Nah, like, yeah. I don't know if there's gonna be another hot take for you. It's crazy because... I don't I know, know if this is gonna be a hot... I don't know. This song was cool. It I don't even remember Nicki's verse. It wasn't... It wasn't, um... It wasn't anything I would just like oh. go back to. This no, was the, uh, about with Safari. With the, I yeah. never fucked Drake. Never fucked. Never fucked oh. fuck Wayne. Never fucked Drake. Um, this whole was cool. It was. It was. It was a simple. Honestly, of the of the Wayne, Nicki, and Drake collaborations that they've always had. Yeah. This would probably be on the lower end of the list. I could definitely think of like. Five Wayne, Nicki, and Drake songs that I'd probably take over this one. I mean, that's cool. They got such a large discography. 
But I, honestly, I feel like the main reason for that is because of the beat, personally. Like, cause it's so, it's slow, it's a simple beat. Yeah, it's not really much going on with the beat, the beat kind of thing. And so, and they really all doing their verses off of the beat. Like none of, none of them like switched their flow in a sporadic way and just started killing. It was more on some. Nobody was really just talking about anything either. No, it was just like a song to do together, and Chris Brown just happened to be on it. On the hook, the hook, okay. Yeah. The other little bad bitches, yeah, it's all right. It was cool. I don't. I wouldn't say it's forgettable, cause it's, it's a hit. So it's like you know you gonna hear that bitch. You yeah. Know? But you know, I don't know if I skip it. Cause it's. Cause it was a. It was like I said, it was a good song. It's just you know. Yeah. I don't know. I might skip it. Guys, but yeah, man. Like I never cared for this damn song. <laughs> the only thing I like about it is Drake's verse. Like Drake has a lot of quotables in his verse. Every line is something you can repeat and just laugh at. Everyone else on the song is whatever. Like Chris Brown singing is cool as always. Lil Wayne completely didn't add anything. It's very rare that <laughs> Wayne enhances a Nicki song. She really added a Bro, don't like Wayne. But Nicki herself on the song lyrically, this was really weak for her. The punchline on the tape part was lame. The oh, chicken, she like, did say that. Play was white. And she's barely even on her own song. After her verse is over, you don't even hear Nicki's voice for the rest of the track. It's like <laughs> she's like on twenty five percent of her own song. Only has never been a dub for me. Drake was enjoyable, but everything goes I can do without. This is cool. Another one. Oh my goodness, this song annoys the hell out of me. I'm <laughs> sure that everyone else loves the trap style banger that the song goes for, and the hook may be catchy to y'all, but I can't stand it. Jeremiah doesn't help this song sound good at all. <laughs> so kind of adds to the annoying. I'm in this bitch. I'm getting money. Oh yeah, she yeah. did do that. I do. I man. didn't like that part I, at all. I know this is probably like some that. of y'all's favorite part, but no, this song is an ear grater in my opinion. And it's one of those tracks that when people tell me they think Pink Print is Nicki Minaj's best album, I just go, you do realize once some more is on the Pink Print, right? <laughs> Your best album when that song is on there. That's funny. Hey, remember this. This okay, you said Roman's Revenge, Roman's Reloaded. Roman's Revenge, Roman's Reloaded. I gotta go back and listen to Roman's Reloaded, but Roman's Revenge is some of my favorite. This was I like Roman's Revenge, the worst to me. I'm trying to remember what Reloaded sounded like. Is it a feature on that's that? the one with Wayne that he just he put oh, the Wayne? Oh, yeah, that, those two are my favorite. Things. But honestly, I, I feel like I would also just because of the beat alone, I think I would pick that over this. I did not like this song at all. Because of how she do that stretch and shit? Yeah, yeah, I ain't like nothing, nothing about this song I liked. I get that. I mean, that's fair. I understand that. Um, it's yeah. interesting how he put this at the, the top, top of the three. Top Roman. Yeah, it's different. That's um, Roman. Uh, all right, then. The thing about this song is the role playing aspect of it. Nikki seriously can put you in the universe of this Roman character and can really paint the picture about his lifestyle. Specifically with this song about how Roman's mother is trying to get someone to perform an exorcism on him because she found out he was gay. Like, it, it's a crazy story. And if you watch her performance at the Grammys on this song, you'll realize that that was great too. For me, the reason why it's in this tier is simply, I don't like the sound of the song from how Nikki sounds on the hook, even though I know she was just imitating someone else's voice to match the character but it's still something that puts me off. And the dark, like, ominous atmosphere that this song gives off, like, it lowers the replay value of it too. I don't see the reason of returning to a song like this. Unless you're into, like, <laughs> unless you're into exorcisms and stuff like that, I don't see a reason why somebody would put this Unless you're just into exorcisms and stuff, <laughs> that's just like, your thing. And that's where you, like, you know, get your kicks. Exorcisms. Um, uh, dope video, man. I like this. Super dope. Definitely gonna check out the, um, part two to this to, See that Nicki Minaj songs he actually does like and thinks so far. I'm pretty curious about that. Big fan. Um, put down in the comment section if you uh agree with our guy Amir, or if you uh you got some issues with him. Yeah, um, I'm sure he'd love to speak to you about all of them. The link to his original video, if y'all want to check that out, will be down below. Also in the comments, put down your top five favorite Nicki Minaj songs. Love to hear that. Big facts. Actually, since it's the trash, put down your top five worst Nicki Minaj song. I doubt we're gonna get anything for that. So, <laughs> I'm sure y'all. Y'all barbs have to have <laughs> some Nicki Minaj songs that y'all don't like. 
I can name you five MF Doom songs I don't like. <laughs> I know y'all got some songs we, y'all do not like. We're not talking about MF Doom right now. Like. Talking about MF Doom. So please list them. If you don't, save your comments for the best. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Please, please subscribe to Amiri as well. Like I said, the Check link to original will be in the description. Check it out. Till next time. Peace. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. You know, I was just venting, man. You know.